Welcome to another edition of Vigorously with me, Val Klein Hands, talking a little bit about both mental health and social media this episode. I'm super, super excited to have notably Sarah in the building, mental health and self-care advocate. Uh, Sarah, thrilled. We've been following each other for some time now, and I cannot believe yes. we're finally doing this. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, so what was it that inspired you to pay more attention to your own mental health and self-care to begin with? So my story with mental health really begins when I was in high school, but I'll say I wasn't really aware of my own mental health until I started teaching and became a high school teacher. Um, I saw students around me struggling with mental health. I saw my coworkers struggling with mental health. And then I would look in the mirror and see myself struggling with mental health. Mm. Um, but truly it stems from when I was in high school and my uncle um, died by suicide. And that had a real tragic effect on my family. It was super confusing for me. I was like 15 at the time. And so reflecting back on that as an adult just really makes me aware of what my mental health was then compared to yeah. now and yeah absolutely what i would love to speak more if you don't mind just about that concept itself because a lot of people don't realize what the ripple effect of suicide within a family involves and what the yeah. consequences of that are going through that time how did you as a family navigate all that um we didn't. <laughs> That's mm. another thing I look back on. Like there are definitely healthier ways that my family could have coped, but my parents just also didn't have the tools or the awareness to like cope with it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember getting the phone call. My uncle lived in Arizona at the time we were living in New York. Um, and my dad wasn't home yet. And I remember my mom getting on the phone and, after she hung up, just sobbing and sobbing. And like, mm -hmm. as a kid, like, it's traumatic to see your mother cry like that. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And I think that uh, hurt me in a lot of ways that I wasn't able to verbalize until I was older. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my parents went, I can't remember if I stayed by myself, or if I stayed with a neighbor, but my parents left to go like, clean up his house and things like that um but then we didn't talk about it, it uh, we talked about him but we didn't talk about it you know what, what I mean what happened right yeah so looking back there definitely could have been some healthier decisions made in terms of talking about it and actually working through it but I'm thankful now especially with my training as a teacher I've had to do a lot of like um like social emotional trainings. And so I'm a lot more aware now of like how to talk about those topics with kids and with yourself. So hugely yeah. important. Was this, was yeah. this your mom's brother or your dad's brother? My mom's brother. Your yes. mother. Okay. Yes. So that's, My that's why Marshall. that sticks. Uh, shout yeah. out to Uncle Marshall. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, that, that does hit. Uh, seeing your own parent upset like that. I mean, we all have those moments in life where sometimes that happens, whether it's like a grandparent and then your parent finds out or yes. mm -hmm. uh, however it was that they passed, it sticks with you. And it's a tough thing Absolutely. to navigate. And honestly, it's making me very happy to hear that as a teacher, you're going through some of that training because back Absolutely. in, we didn't have it in the nineties and early two thousands. No. None. The teacher just said, go Not cry in a corner and would like leave you alone. And that would be yeah. it. Like you exactly. no no attention whatsoever, no like check-ins, none of that. Um now looking back, you think talking about it probably would have helped the whole family? Yeah. I was actually thinking earlier, like, what if what if that's my cat? What if um what if the roles were reversed and I was in my mom's shoes? Mm -hmm. I would have gotten us into therapy so quick. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely important. What I appreciate about your content is that you do acknowledge that not everybody has endless amounts of disposable income to spend, not just on their own mental health care, but their self-care and ideas for that. You have all the ideas 
that literally costs nothing when it comes to self-care. <laughs> and I, so I was just curious, was that experience or maybe your own mental health journey? What, what was it that sparked being conscious of the fact that not everybody has that disposable income to do those things? Um, I would say, gosh, I feel like I'm like not going to stop talking about teaching in this, but like truly like my experience as a teacher, like has shaped me into who I am. And it's like a huge part of why I care about these topics. Um, mm -hmm. so when I taught in your good old traditional public school, um, I taught at a title one school, which meant that, um, 70% or more of the students received free and reduced lunch before this was before everyone had free and reduced lunch reduced lunch in North Carolina, mm. or at least my county, okay. I'm not entirely sure. But um, a lot of my students were low income, had parents in jail, parents on drugs, a um, lot of really sad situations. And so I saw the effect on my students' mental health um, of just st stress and trauma in their everyday lives. But also they didn't have the income to help themselves their parents didn't have the income to help them and a lot of them weren't working jobs they didn't have the capacity to help themselves you know mm -hmm. um so that was always really hard to to watch especially you know when you, when you knew you had a student going through something that like only adults should go through like I wish I could have just given them hundreds of dollars to go to therapy or whatever it may be um but yeah yeah eye-opening when you start mm -hmm. to meet people of other cultures and that's why i yes. definitely am big on like just travel get out there and travel and see what the other situations are like yes. and what what's going on within the world some of your favorite like free totally not cost involved things to do when it comes to self-care they're featured on the wonderful self-care wheel i love Yay! the self-care wheel that we, <laughs> the reels you. that we do on instagram it is so much fun i i did it recently and i got like just go touch grass i think was essentially what everybody got for this past <laughs> yes. week like literally go touch grass like it's it's actually good for you and it actually costs yes. nothing so nothing can you just yes. Tell, tell us more about like the color wheel and the types of things that are on it that maybe we could use as tips. Yeah, so um, I actually got the idea for the self-care wheel from um, another Instagrammer. She actually forgot her name. Um, I'll tell you it later so you can tag her or something. But um, she's a cleaning lady on Instagram. And so she'll spin the wheel and then it'll land on something for some for people to tidy up. And so I messaged her and, and asked if she would like care if I like took the idea, but put it into self-care and she had no problems with it. And she sent me the link to her wheel. So I wrote in all the self-care ideas and yeah, they are all completely free and they're all quick. So on my wheel, you will not find like, go take a 40 minute bubble bath or like mm -hmm. any, any, anything like super time consuming like that, because not only do some people not have the money to spend on self-care but they also don't have the time to spend on self-care like if you're a working mom you know um so one of my favorites is definitely sit or walk outside I think that is so just easy and important for your mental health sit outside get in the sunshine breathe in the fresh air you know um I also love writing down things you're grateful for or things you're excited for. I think it's really important to mm -hmm. have that gratitude mindset, but also to be looking forward to things in the future is such a like healthy state of mind to be in. So those are probably my three favorite on there. I love that, especially looking toward the future. That was a big, big part of what pulls me out of any depressive episode yes. that I'm in. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm medicated and a lot of the depression that I've been through in my life has been work related, like tied to the day job. Not this, this yeah. is fun. Like this isn't even a job. This is fun. But yeah. I just, I've had a hard time like in the office in a corporate setting as a neurodivergent person. So I, I would get depressed about the fact that I felt like I wasn't doing things correctly or I wasn't making my superiors happy. And I just felt like it was all going to fail and it was all going to implode. And therefore I was going to, failed the people around me and catastrophe but right something happened the second that I started to put my resume out there when I got to a point where I felt like things were getting toxic 
it was such a relief just that alone just just like just the act of putting my resume out there was like I at least have something potentially to look forward to I'm I'm at least doing whatever it is I need to do to like make a change at least in the right direction I don't know what's going to come of it but I took the control that I do have in this situation and that made me feel good people forget that Absolutely. Absolutely. And just have, just reminding yourself that you have tomorrow, you have next week, like you have things, even if they're super tiny and small, you have things to look forward to. So you do. I completely agree with you. What are some of your favorite ways to practice self-care? Um, I love just going for a walk with my dogs. Um, I will either listen on my walks, listen to a podcast, or sometimes when I really just want to really not think about anything, I will just put in some music or even like white noise sometimes. It just depends on what mood Mm -hmm. I'm in and what I need, what I need Mm -hmm. at that moment. Um, I am guilty of a good couch rot. I think that that is not to be shamed. And I think that you need a good couch rot sometimes. And I think it is a form of self-care as long as you're not overdoing it and spending all day, several days on the couch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might um, be depressed in that instance. <laughs> like that's not. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but couch rot, one, couch rot once in a while is definitely needed. Um, I also love like. I love like working with my hands and doing Mm. something kind of tactile. It kind of like gets your brain uh, out of whatever, whatever stressing you out and puts you in the moment of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So my boyfriend and I lately have been doing adult Legos. We did a Lego orchid um, the other day and it's so fun. Like I was kind of not against it at first, but I was like, yeah, okay, this isn't going to be that fun, but (laughs) it was really fun. It was really fun. (laughs) You are right back. Yeah. I also love a coloring book. Um, even like, like doing your nails or putting on like a face mask, like those are like, like those are self-care, but I think the real self-care behind doing your nails or putting on a face mask or whatever it may be is that you're using your hands and you're, you're doing something with your hands and focusing on the moment. Yeah. yeah. On, well, on doing something that's outside of the headspace yes. that you're in yes. at the time, which I mean, I'm guilty of that or of ruminating on things like that. That's, that's what I'll do at two in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. I didn't get any sleep and I got to be up at five. <laughs> Yeah, it's, me too. <laughs> it's it's it spirals. How can we practice self care at work? I know you've touched on this on your YouTube. Uh, definitely one video that I I caught and I was like, oh, this yeah. is so helpful. And I know we got a lot of listeners that have these day jobs and don't know what to do with all that juju, all that environment yes. coming at them. What are some mm-hmm. of your favorite ways to practice self care at work? One of them I know was hydration, and that I subscribe to. Yes, that that is. That is probably the most important one is to stay hydrated and eat enough. If you're Mm -hmm. hungry at work, like it doesn't matter how many plants you have at your desk or how much calming music you listen to. If you are hungry, you are not going to be happy. So definitely feed yourself and hydrate yourself at work. Number one. So plan ahead for those things. Um, I would say the next most important thing is to create an environment, even if it's just your little tiny cubicle, create an environment where you feel happy and calm and safe. And, mm-hmm. um, when I was teaching, I worked really hard to thrift a lot of, um, table lamps. So I would always have my classroom lights off and I just had lamps around my room because that lighting and the natural light coming in through the windows too, like made a huge difference. Um, so if you can get away from fluorescent lighting, I highly recommend that. Um, but you know, pictures of your pets or people you love having plants, having like, uh, little objects, like trinkets from your travels or whatever it may be on your desk that brings you joy. If you enjoy spending time at your desk or wherever you're working, you are going to feel more cared for by yourself than if you don't have an environment where you enjoy being. So yeah, I think that's definitely, those are definitely the two big things. Whatever you can do to make it not feel like the prison that it is essentially. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. 
exactly (laughs) you're a plant mama you are an animal mama you've got cats you got dogs in what ways i'm curious about this do the plants and the pets contribute to your mental well-being because my cat is amazing i love her she seems to know when i'm depressed and she'll like hang out in bed with me like they there's something going on there they know they know they i think that they can sense our like cortisol levels or something they know they know when we are stressed out um but i think the biggest thing about having pets is like having something to implants having something to take care of um and nurture and watch it grow like that's really rewarding for the human brain and that is and of course snuggles i love my dogs i love yeah. they they sleep in their bed don't come at me they they lay on the couch <laughs> i know a lot of people are against all that but it's it just makes me happy and like doing things that make you happy is self-care if you're doing them in healthy you know healthy ways so yeah moderation just like anything else i did watch the video with ollie olive and i love her little tag in the video that says dirt because i call yes. my cat a dirt <laughs> all the time we have like we have thousands of names for her she's also i mean she's a dirt she's also a weirdo she's also a pretty girl yep. she's also a kitty girl she's also <laughs> what are you doing she, yep. she's also a problem she's also the you know mike sorrentino the situation she's also the interruption because she loves to interrupt <laughs> our sleep like we have thousands of names for her yeah. what are some of your fun cookie names for your animals oh we actually don't have like that many surprisingly we call olive derpy ollie <laughs> jude jude is just oh well we call jude the queen and then olive is the princess <laughs> i don't really know where that came from that's just like kind of the vibes they give off oh um, one's alpha in that situation oh, yeah um, I did think of one. We call all of menace a lot. We say <laughs> a little menace, menace mode. She just, she, you ever seen those videos where it's like, uh, the dog that made you want to get a second dog because your first yep. dog was so perfect and calm. Yep. That is exactly our situation. Jude is the calmest being on earth and olive is the exact opposite (laughs) oh my god well you you brought that up in the video where olive sort of awakened you to this whole other set of challenges that did challenge your mental health we don't think about that when we take on all these animals whether it's you know sometimes even one can be too much depending on what you got going on in your life can you speak to what you learned in that experience Yes. Oh my gosh. We had Jude for four years before we got Olive and, uh, I cried so much. I thought I legit thought we had made a mistake and Mm. I did not know how we were going to come out the other side. And it wasn't because of the two dogs. It was actually because of Olive and our cat, Frankie. He was, he was very territorial he stopped using his litter box. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, he was really stressed out, but he was also like, I laugh about it now. He was also hunting her. Like he would get real close to the ground and <laughs> go right up to her and smack her in the face. Oh. And like, Ooh. yeah, thank goodness. She is not, she was never aggressive back toward him, but he was very upset by her presence in our house. Um, it was hard leaving because we have never crated a dog before. Um, Mm -hmm. even like growing up, I've just never used a dog crate. I know that probably sounds weird. Um, but we did crate Olive for the first couple nights because we weren't sure how everyone would react like in the bed together, you know, cause the bed is where they sleep very territorial over it. Um, and so the first two nights we crated her, she's in the room with us but just howling and whining all night Aww. long like we did not sleep and it Frankie took probably three weeks to a month so it felt like a long time but looking back we're probably pretty lucky that it only lasted that amount of time um but it, it that's the amount of time it took him to be okay with her um he was not happy he's <laughs> and throwing it was, hands 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was stressful seeing him stress and his behaviors all change. And then, you know, we still had like our regular lives to live mm-hmm. while we were dealing with that. So that was very, very stressful. Yeah. yeah. How did you navigate all that? Did you just give yourself some patience, some grace yeah. and just say, look, this is a transition time and in a couple of weeks we're all going to get through it? Or did it just feel like, oh, is this ever going to end? Um, a little bit of both. It was definitely yeah. a lot of grace and patience and just reminding ourselves that it will probably be okay in a couple of weeks. We got, I don't know if you can see it, this baby gate. We ended up keeping oh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, because Frankie's litter box is in there. So it's a place for him to go when we're gone without her being able to get in there. So we live in a tiny apartment. So mm. that's the only way for him to truly have his own space is with that um, baby gate there. We also would periodically um, put Olive on the leash and like get them as close as possible um, without him like hissing at her. And Mm. we just every couple of days got closer and closer until one day they were just okay. And now they're like best friends and they play (laughs) and snuggle together. Of course. That's how it always is. Yeah. (laughs) And you're like, man, why couldn't y'all do that in the first place? (laughs) Yes. So it was really hard at first getting a second dog, but if if anyone listening is going through that, it it does get better. It does get yeah. better. <laughs> You're not alone. Just give it a minute. Give it some time. Yes. And yes. just keep everybody safe and you'll navigate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so social media is where you and I found each other. I would love to hear about your social media journey, going public with your own mental health and self-care situation and your own tips. Tell me about the beginning and where we are with that and where you want to go in the future. Yeah. So the beginning of my social media started in 2020. My account was actually a small business account where I made handmade stationery cards, calendars, things like that. So if you scroll back far enough, you can see all the stuff from the good old days. Um, But basically in 2020, my boyfriend and I were fortunate enough to put our stimulus checks together and we started a business and we sold at pop-ups like all over Charlotte. We were were in a couple like local stores. Um, We were doing wholesale online. Like it was profitable for a couple of years. Um, Our biggest seller was positive affirmation cards. So the, oh, okay. the mindset behind my business was always about spreading joy and, you know, self-care. Um, and so eventually we both just kind of burnt out from holding cards all the time. And it wasn't what I felt super passionate about anymore, but I still remained passionate about the positive affirmations and self-care and mm-hmm. with that comes mental health. And so I just started like reflecting a lot on my own mental health and what I wanted my page to my, my page to truly be. And I just started posting like personal stuff and it kind of took off. And that's what my whole page is about now is self-care and mental health. And I'm really proud of myself for like the community I've built. And mm. um, it's a lot of fun. Like it truly is like a passion project for me. I don't know if project is the right word. It's just a passion, like, I don't know. What's the word? <laughs> it's a, it's passion. It's something that it's you're passionate passion. about. Yeah. That's that's yeah. exactly what it is. And it sounds like to come up with that and to refine it, so to speak, you listen to what it was your audience had to say. Imagine that your built-in focus group that was already there. Yeah, that's so true. It's funny because a lot of people followed me because of my positive affirmation cards because that was the item that really took off. So mm. a lot of my followers in my community people I talk to all the time they've been there since the beginning and they've stayed and I love them so much and it's amazing yeah well probably yeah. because I mean positive affirmations and self-care tips and mental health tips that's not exactly a great leap from to go from one to the other so you're you're still keeping them interested is what I'm getting at because yes. the topics really aren't that far apart which right, is nice exactly exactly yeah. exactly so what's next for you? What can we look forward to coming in from you? Um, let me pull something up. I just wrote out my YouTube script 
Oh, fun. This coming week, I'm going to be talking about um, me time within relationships. I've been doing a Ooh. lot of reflecting. Gareth and I have been together for nine, nine, eight years, nine years. I can't do math in my head like that, but uh, it's been, it's been like almost a decade, which is completely wild. Um, right. So we were long distance for two of those years. Um, and so just having me time, we live together. So having me time is sometimes hard to get, but I also have to plan it. Like it's a whole thing. So I'm really digging into that idea in my next YouTube video. Oh, okay. Fun. And married people yes. can definitely, whoo, we all, we all need that. Like I love my husband, but th there is an art to what you're getting at making sure that you are preserving who you are, the individual, Yes, yes. because that's who they fell in love with. So whatever yes. me time you got to craft within there, you got to work schedules together, you know, whatever, even if like, cause let's be real. We're not watching the same shows. Okay, and we need our right. show time. We listen, we right. need our Vanderpump rules. Okay. Once in a while, right. I want my Vanderpump rules and I want my like love is blind, but he might exactly want, but he wants Jeopardy and Kung Fu and anime. And exactly. I'm like that's cool. I'll watch that with <laughs> you. But I know the other stuff like isn't him. That's just one example of how you can easily and relatively inexpensively create me yes. time. Just yes, just exactly. literally find your own time to sit and enjoy the things that you enjoy and that make you the individual that you are. That's something that yes. I've learned for sure in 10 years of marriage and in yeah. 15 years of being together. But like that's amazing. <laughs> it's it, it's important. Yeah. It really is because that's exactly what it does is whenever we come together after we've done that, we feel like, oh. I still know who you are. Let's go hang out. Let's go continue to date. <laughs> like, I still like yes. you. Let's do that. Yes, exactly. And I feel like there's so much pressure in society to do things with your partner. Um, one, an example of this, and it's a fun trend, and I actually had thought about doing it myself, but have you heard of like the A to Z dates? No. What is that? Um, oh, it's it's like a trend where you go out with your husband, girlfriend, whoever, and... um. You do your first date is something that starts with an A, so like apple picking. Next one oh, is okay. B, C, all the way to Z. Yeah, you record it and post it, and it's your A to Z date series. I've seen a lot of people doing that, and it's so fun. But I also think it's this comment on how we're almost expected to be doing things with our partners all the time. So mm -hmm. I think like just making room in your schedule to be yourself and to do something that you enjoy that maybe your partner doesn't necessarily enjoy like that's okay and that's actually a good thing yeah it doesn't have to be an all that you're around each other all the time thing believe me like trust me we, yes. we treasure we treasure we treasure both periods of times times when we're apart and times when we're together balance yeah. that's that's exactly. so key that's yeah, what matters. Exactly. Sarah, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for your nuggets of wisdom. I cannot wait to see what comes and we'll definitely be checking in with you. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Val.